Hey everyone, I'm Eliza Saw, and today I'm finally doing it. Plant tour. I've actually been wanting to do a plant tour for a while now, but the thing is, I have just been non-stop collecting. So, I mean, it's been a couple weeks since I bought a plant, and I'm thinking, maybe now's the time. And then spring has sprung, everything is growing, so I think it's the perfect time for me to show you what I've got, my journey with it so far. The thing is, my room faces north, northwest, north, northwest, more north than west. <laughs> Somehow these plants are doing great, which is surprising because I never knew that you could have plants in the north facing window. So I only started collecting plants, I want to say halfway into the pandemic. <laughs> halfway is it halfway are we at halfway now it's been about a year i want to say i started late 2020 so this has been requested by another one of my planty friends you know who you are i hope you're watching this and i hope you like if you're new to my channel i do a lot of baking tutorials i do some random crafty tutorials like how i upcycle my clothing and i do monthly vlogs so don't forget to like this video if you're excited to see my plants and subscribe if you haven't already and let's get on with it um, where should I start? I guess I'll start with the one closest to the camera. This is my snake plant or Sansevieria or mother, mother-in-law tongue is what it, I think it's called. Um, it's a very hardy plant. It cleans the air. It needs bright and direct but can handle some low light. One of my first few plants actually and ever since I've gotten it I've noticed a small couple growths in the middle so hopefully those grow a lot taller in the spring or summer but I'm not expecting huge growth because it is a slow growing plant. I did find some scale on it. I'm pretty sure it's scale because when I pick at it with my fingernail it flops off so I'm assuming it's scale because it's also left a couple of these like damage marks on the back. So I'm keeping a good eye on it, keeping it a little further away from my plants but not too far because I don't think scale really spreads like that it's very easy to take care of. I did have an issue with it having lots of fungus gnats at the beginning when I first got it because it would hide in the folds. I covered the whole top of the soil with a couple sticky sticks, like the strips alone, and it's done the trick. Hasn't really had any fungus gnats since. Moving on. <laughs> this is, disclaimer, this is probably going to be a really all over the place plant tour because I'm just going to go as I look at it, but yeah. So next up we've got this Pilea or Chinese coin plant and it is one of my new favorites although I do think it needs to get repotted sometime soon because I've got about like three plants in one pot here. This one was actually the pup that create was created but it's growing so big that I actually think it's just it's definitely going to be repotted sometime soon but they've grown so tall. When I first got it this plant was probably like this high. I can't really figure out why I have like spots on it but i'm gonna try and figure it out i've been switching to filtered water over tap water and hopefully that helps i've been inspecting for pests but i haven't really seen anything so yeah moving on this is my um jacina which i got from ikea and it's grown quite a lot i don't know i love it it looks like a little in this pot particularly it looks like a little pineapple bread and direct low light i don't know i just give it a little mist daily but yeah that's that's my dracaena i believe it's either called a dracaena hawaiian sunshine or a corn plant <laughs> so now up next we've got this very don't mind the stick there was a sticky stick in this i took it out because it was sticking to everything ah! this is my pink polka dot plant it's been through a lot when i first got it it was a lighter shade of pink and the leaves were way bigger um then i left it at my fiance's place for a while and it wasn't getting enough sunlight i believe so it started to revert back to full green so i decided to bring it home so i could watch it more it started to get pink coloring back and then we had this idea to try and make it more bushy so we kept chopping off longer leggy parts putting it in a glass of water to propagate once it grew roots we would put it back in and i did that about two or three times so now it's very very bushy but the problem after that became that i believe my room was way too dry so it started to get fuzzy now i keep it right in front of my humidifier to kind of keep it from growing fuzzy it springs back very easily it's not too hard to take care of it just likes high humidity and lots of bright and direct sunlight moving on it's getting kind of hot 
This is my Prince of Orange plant and it's one of my favorites because of course the beautiful orange foliage don't mind the sticky stick i'm still trying to collect as many fungus gnats as i can this is actually a new leaf the one right here in the middle um the youngest leaves are more orange and then the older leaves become more green so this one's kind of like in the transition stage where it's like a dark orange brown turning green um it's such an interesting plant so easy to take care of bright and direct water when top inches dry like it's it's just a beautiful philodendron and i hope to collect more philodendrons great fine also i love the pot it's so cute okay so this one that i'm about to bring up this one is my parlor palm it's grown quite a lot it's very big and bushy as you can see it can barely fit in the frame um but it's been through so much like it's kind of crazy that this plant is thriving because it was one of my first plants and at first i didn't know you were supposed to spray it down or keep it in a moist environment so naturally it got dust mites no not dust mites spider mites i found a couple spider webs on it and that was my first experience with pests <laughs> What I ended up doing, because this was less bushy at the time, I would just, I took a Q-tip dipped in hot soapy water, I wiped down the underside and the top side of each leaf to get rid of any larva or any remaining dust mites, or spider mites. Why do I keep saying dust mites? Well, this was after I sprayed it down in the shower. Um, then I did the hydrogen peroxide rinse, and I did that multiple times until I stopped seeing spider webs. And now to keep it from having, ooh, it's tangled. And to stop it from having spider mite, I give it a mist daily. Grown with me a lot. Many, many, many new shoots. I've got a couple older leaves that are dying off, but that's okay. One of my other favorites. I'm gonna say that about all of them, but <laughs> so beautiful. I used to sleep this way so that when I wake up in the morning, I just see the leaves overhanging in front of my face and I'd imagine I was on a beach. This is my way of coping since the pandemic hit. So we've also got up here my English Ivy. Let me take it out of my little holder real quick it definitely gave me lots of joy during the winter time because it's such a fast grower even without like proper conditions i don't know what to do about this one because it's just growing so fast that i know that it's gonna i'm gonna have to do something about it <laughs> but for now i keep it here in my little hanger and i just let it grow so here are my air plants or I believe it's pronounced Tillandsias. So at first I didn't really understand these, I just saw these. Decided to get some for myself. First it started with one and then two and then three and I have four. But the fourth one I'm just growing until I can see my friend Abby because I can give it to her then. I give them a soak for 20 minutes in like lukewarm tap water once a week or I just missed it. But you gotta make sure it dries up because air plants like air. Also, they can rot really easily if you don't dry out the inside or the crown. Ooh, is that a new leaf? Exciting, these are so exciting. I don't know why, something about them. They're, they're great decoration too. They are really good and bright and direct, so I keep them just kind of off to the side. So these ones are my new Monstera additions. Um, this one is a Monstera, hold on, Adansonia. It's also known as Swiss cheese plant. Um, I've heard that it's kind of an ugly plant. I've heard that it's a very beautiful plant. It's all, I mean, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? Um, <laughs> I think it's really cute, especially when it looks nice and healthy and green. It grows quite fast, I'm noticing. It gets, ew. Aerial roots are so disgusting. Like, they just look so gross to me. I don't know if it's just me. Um, but yeah, it's growing lots of roots really quick. It's sprouting new leaves pretty fast as well. Um, once these grow, longer bigger and bushier they can be really expensive same with this one i honestly have no idea how to say it i want to say it's like raphidoderma sperma something like that but i also i just call it my mini monstera i think which is what it's also called i don't know i just feel like it's the same same but diff <laughs> This one doesn't seem to be growing as fast, but I don't know. More updates to come, but yeah. So speaking of Monsteras, okay, so this one is my prized possession. This one, it, <laughs> it's so big. <laughs> 
this is my Monstera Deliciosa. When I bought it, this one was the biggest leaf and it was like it had a lot of smaller leaves. There was no holes in any of the leaves when I bought it, so I just assumed it would never have any holes. But lo and behold, it's got a couple holes. And I think, well, my newest leaf has zero holes, so I'm thinking it still needs to mature a little more. Um, but it's got a huge aerial root. Fungus gnats. Disgusting. I had to chop off a chop off. I had to chop off a couple of the older leaves because they were turning yellow so i believe that made way for the newer leaves that are humongous like if you compare the old leaf to a new leaf it's huge it's fucking massive which is why i love it so much so anyways once it started to sprout an aerial root that's when i started to consider the moss pole this moss pole was given to me by my mom-in-law thanks ma oh and i haven't been saying their names this one is moni moni the monstera it's the first name that came to my head, don't judge me. Not much else to say about this, but if you have any questions, leave it below. I just keep it right in front of my window. It, it sits right in front of the window that gets the slightest bit amount of uh, direct sun right at the end of the day, so it um, gets a lot of sun. Um, there's also this tiny little leaf here, if you can see. This one's been here since the beginning. I don't know, it's so cute. Those are my three monsteras, and I hope you like looking at that. I'm not done yet. Why am I ending this video? Let me go get the rest of my plants. Okay. This is Peppa. Oh, I just lost a leaf. This is Peppa, the Peperomia Rosso. And honestly, it's it's been my difficult, the most difficult plant that I've had so far. Um, when I first got it, it was super cute, super healthy. I left it at SEDS for a while and same thing sort of happened where it wasn't getting enough sun and it started to regress and lose its color, sort of like, well, that's pretty red still. But when I got it back from his house, all the undersides were no longer red. They were all like pale. I took it home, gave it some TLC. It started to gain its red color again. It started to be a little more perky. I don't know. I guess this was getting way too much sun because I think these leaves are either old or they're sun bleached i can't really figure it out but the inside like the middle new leaves are all very healthy and they all look really good so i don't know i'm keeping an eye on it i just really can't figure out this plant i read that it could have like a nutrient deficiency so i have also been fertilizing it otherwise i know it's doing okay because it's got some new growth so i'm not too worried about it but i just feel weird about the weird leaves I mean, plants aren't perfect, just like people, but we love them anyways. That is my Peperomia Rosso. Next. Oh wait, so over here we've got my Pothos Corner. And a funny story, this one is from my mom, which from what I under, ooh, new sprout. Um, from my understanding is that when she worked in an office building, her and her coworkers took a cut from one of her other coworkers and they just traded leaf cuttings which i didn't understand at first but now i get it so she's just been growing lots of pothos and i believe it's a marble pothos i'm not 100 percent sure um and she's not sure either so it's a beautiful plant i love it it's so pretty and we've repotted it so that it trails and it's really cute i keep it on the side of my bookshelf this one is my neon pothos from my other mom my mama la and she actually yeah, just gave me a little bit very bushy very pretty i love the color um hopefully later on it grows longer so that i can kind of make it trail alongside my other pothos but yeah very easy to take care of give me all the pothos also have you seen in nature they grow to be ginormous that's all i gotta say about my pothos let's move on this one is my money tree a very very common house plant the thing about it is that i may have killed a bit of it basically when i got it it had five trunks and now it's down to three because i don't know if i overwatered, which is possible which is very possible i love to water yeah they just slowly rot it off so i had to just pluck them out unbraid the whole thing and remove it um twice now so i'm hoping these guys do okay i'm trying not to overwater. i'm trying to let it dry out as much as possible but it, i love this plant because it's so low light like i keep it at the back there on my bookshelf and it's still got lots of new growth so you know also this is from costco but because my 
Monstera is called Mani. This one, my money tree, cannot be Mani as well. So instead, I named him Dinero, like money in Spanish, because I'm learning Spanish. I think at some point I started to stop naming them just because I had so many and I was collecting way too fast, but uh. If I don't come up with a name for them at the top of my head, they just don't get a name. Um, also, this one's name is Little Guy. This is Big Guy because it's also a Dracaena Hawaiian Sunshine or Corn Plant, but bigger. So the thing about this plant is that I got it for like $15 at Home Depot and I was like, wow, what a steal because it's such a big plant. And I realized it was pretty much infested with mealybugs. I feel like we managed to save it. Okay, so now we've got our string ofs. One is a string of hearts and the other one is a string of arrows. The string of arrows I bought, the string of hearts that my mom-in-law gave me. Um, they're growing really well, really fast. I'm surprised that these plants grow so freaking fast and I love it. And I just hang them up here on my curtain rod in front of my north facing window and they do so well. Oh yes, follow me. So this is my crispy wave plant. It's crispy, it's wavy. So the thing about this plant is that when I got it, it looked nice and healthy. And then I don't know what really happened. It started to develop these dark spots towards the bottom and it started to develop these brown sides. It almost looks like burn marks, but I've decided to keep it farther away from all my other plants just in case it is a pest because I can't really figure it out. Um, it doesn't seem like anything's moving or dying and there's still some new growth. So if you have a crispy wave plant, please let me know if you know what's going on. But yeah, I just keep it in my bathroom so that it gets lots of high humidity. I've read that it's like a spa day for them whenever they get into a nice humid place. Yeah, and there's a tiny window in my washroom, so I believe it's enough light because this is a very low light plant from what I've read. I'm not sure if I'm killing it by keeping it away from bright and direct, but so far it seems okay. I'm worried that these might have been burn marks anyways from getting too much sun, so... Ah, still very cute though. So... Some honorable mentions that I'm going to bring up would be the plants that I put all around the rest of the house and aren't just in my room. So because I've got a north facing window, um, so far every plant that I've gotten here is doing great, but there are some plants that just cannot thrive in a north facing window. So I've got the, I'm gonna butcher this, but triangulus, oxalis or fake shamrock and it's in, in this tiny little like two inch pot but look at the super cute little blooms that it's got this plant is super bushy super huge and if anyone has this could you please tell me why the underside of my plant is purple i know that there is a fully purple triangulus oxalis or fake shamrock but i don't think i have that one so i'm hoping it's healthy i don't know i'm hoping it's not sunburn but I think it's super interesting that the underside is purple. So I love that about that plant, super easy, low maintenance. I just fill up the little self-watering container. And next to it is my shrimp plant, which unfortunately has no flowers right now, but when it does, the flowers kind of look like shrimps. Um, aside from that, I've got all these succulents and cacti that I'm trying to save. I have saved what I can from these succulents and cacti. So I had this little bunny ear cactus, which this part that's planted in the soil actually used to be like the bud. <laughs> or the tiny part of my bigger plant. I killed the bigger part, saved the top half. It seems to be doing great now. So I mean, the succulent that I have here has been with me through so much. When I got it, it was just this tiny little green succulent. It started to grow super tall and super leggy. Got this like white stripes on the leaves. It also had mealy bugs at one point. I sprayed it with alcohol, chopped off the whole head because it was super leggy and then planted that in the, in the soil here. We put it in the south facing window where it gets plenty of sunlight and then the white part turned pink and now it's sprouting like a new little head. One of my favorites because it's been through so much and it just continues to adapt. I got a couple more succulent leaves. This one is sprouting into a whole new echeveria on its own. It's super cute. Ugh, I just love that one so much. Um, here is my gerbera daisy. It had these really cute white blooms but they are slowly dying but it's because they're making way for more blooms. So ever since I started collecting plants, I feel like I've learned so much. I'm still learning every day. I highly recommend everyone get one of these. They tell you how your plants are doing, how you're doing. You might not even know that you're suffering from a dry room. 
So I hope you enjoyed my pandemic plant tour. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment below if you'd like to see more plant content because I 100% would love to make more plant content. I'll see you all next week because I do videos every single week. So thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye.